if one were trying to conceptualize the threat from nuclear weapons that we all face in this world these days, um, I would say they come in three bundles. Uh, the first bundle is a traditional bundle. We know it from the Cold War, and that's from a confrontation between existing nuclear weapon states. Uh, so during the Cold War, that was the United States and the Soviet Union principally. We now have nuclear weapon states in India and Pakistan that we worry about engaging in a conflict. Uh, and there can be more such, but it's a, a concern that countries that go to war will use nuclear weapons and nuclear weapons will be used in that context. That's the first bundle. Second bundle, I'd say, is the proliferation of nuclear weapons to more states. So whatever you think now is uh, the character of the threat from countries that have nuclear weapons, most of us think it would be a lot worse if a lot more countries had nuclear weapons and their conflicts could escalate into a nuclear weapons exchange. So that's the nuclear proliferation issue. That's been around also since the beginning uh, of the nuclear age. Uh, and it's focused right now these days on two countries in particular, North Korea that has nuclear weapons but doesn't have a big program, and Iran, which has a program that we think is aimed at building nuclear weapons. So that's the second bundle, the spread of weapons to other countries. The third bundle uh, is something that is, for me, right now, the most dangerous for the United States, and, and probably for most other countries, but certainly for the United States, and that is the risk of nuclear terrorism. That is to say, not the nation state as the actor, but a non-national group, a terrorist group, Al-Qaeda is one we always think of, but not the only one we could think of, that acquired a nuclear weapon and used that weapon. So think of 9-11, but imagine nuclear weapons going off in American cities. So that's a different concern than the first two, and it has a different dynamic, but um, I do believe that is the most pressing national security concern that the United States confronts today. When we think about the long chain from the idea to attack the United States, for example, with a nuclear weapon that terrorists might have, uh, and we think of the difficult steps in that long chain, the hardest one is to get the fissile material. If a terrorist group has the fissile material, then I would submit that getting the people together the capability to design and manufacture the device, getting the equipment together to manufacture the components of the device, to actually do that, to transport it and introduce it into the United States, the other steps, all those other steps, are a lot less demanding than that one step to get the fissile material. If we can block that fissile material, we block the rest of the chain. I don't think you need it during the Cold War to remind Americans that the Soviet Union had 30,000 nuclear weapons, nearly all of them pointed at us. Everybody knew that. I don't know that everybody knows much about the threat from nuclear terrorism. I know they wouldn't like it. They don't, if you said the phrase, they wouldn't like it. But I don't think they have any grip on the dynamics of that. And the real dynamics of the threat come from the fissile material and its availability. So the summit once again turns the spotlight on something and reminds people we need to worry about this. One idea that we have been considering and we think has great virtue uh, is the idea of uh, developing a norm in the international community uh, against uh, the continued uh, acceptance of uh, fissile material for any purpose. Uh, now, this would be an extension of what uh, has been thought of in other contexts where we think about arms control or disarmament reducing the number of nuclear weapons. That's widely embraced, uh, and uh, there's a, quite a movement behind what's called nuclear zero. We have been thinking about uh, a norm that would go to fissile material zero so that uh, countries would agree uh, that there was no longer a need for more fissile material, so they would stop producing it. Uh, they would agree that uh, the existing nuclear material uh, should be secured to the gold standard, uh, and that they would agree that uh, the existing stockpiles should be eliminated. Is this likely? Is this plausible? 
I would say that there are many desirable things that look unlikely that ultimately by hard work, dedication, and passion come to pass. This could be one of them.